uh, start that. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kurt Bellavance from the city of Peabody to kick us off. Uh, thank you, Brooks. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm glad everybody could uh, that signed up and could attend this uh, important workshop tonight. Um, my name is uh, Kurt Bellavance. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development for the city of Peabody. Um, we want to uh, let everybody know that um, uh, about roughly two years ago, MAPC uh, had reached out to, to our uh, office. Uh, they are the regional planning agency uh, for the city of Peabody. Uh, they are centered in uh, Boston. Um, they had approached us and talked to us about a, a grant. Um, this grant would be um, a technical assistance grant, which means that the MAPC and their staff uh, applied for a grant uh, through the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs uh, to uh, offer technical assistance to the city of Peabody among three other uh, communities, Ipswich, Belmont, and Marblehead. Uh, the uh, approach was to look at uh, cities and towns that had municipal light plant facilities uh, and look at uh, trying to create uh, what's called a roadmap uh, to, uh, to net zero emissions. So we had worked with them on applying uh, roughly uh, a year or so, year and a half or so ago. Uh, they were successful in putting their grant together. They did most of the work. Uh, we'll give them that credit. Uh, and then we've been meeting um, since the roughly uh, February, uh, going over gathering uh, data and information and providing that to uh, to Brooks, who's the, uh, who's the project uh, leader on this for the city, and uh, providing them with information um, to, to put together this, uh, what they call a roadmap uh, to uh, net zero emissions. So we're at the time now where they, we've put together and gathered a lot of uh, data and information, uh, and to we want to get uh, community feedback uh, in regards to that. Uh, we'll go through a series of slides and we'll ask some questions for, for everyone who's uh, participating tonight. And then we'll continue on putting that, uh, that plan together. And uh, the project is roughly a, um, from applying to the grant to the end, about a two year uh, project. Uh, but most of the work is done, has been done over the last few months and will continue over the next few months. Uh, and then we'll, I, I believe we'll have uh, another uh, public participation part of this uh, coming up forward. Um, I also wanted to uh, welcome uh, Brian Howcroft uh, from PMLP, who's been working with us uh, with this project, uh, as well as uh, Drew Levin uh, from my office uh, in the planning department. Uh, welcome for them as well as, uh, as part of this team uh, working with MAPC. So I'll give it back to you, uh, Brooks, and uh, look forward to uh, this evening's progress. Thanks, Kurt, and um, thanks for that that introduction. Um, so, as Kurt said, I'm I'm Brooks Winner. I'm a senior clean energy specialist at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and I'm the the project manager for this uh, net zero planning project with the city of PBD. And um, before we get started tonight, I just want to acknowledge that some of you are here because uh, you have concerns about the 2015A project. And we, we've heard about some of those concerns um, and we've made space in the meeting tonight for, for uh, to hear from you all about, um, about that project specifically. Um, but we also want to acknowledge that that um, that there we want we want to hear from from you all as community members in Peabody about kind of the full scope of uh, emissions and uh, pol pollution in in the city and and how to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So you'll see there um, we're going to go into breakout groups. I'm going to run through a quick set of slides to provide some context. And then there's a there's a sort of a session of, of your breakout group that will focus on overall priorities. We'd love to hear your thoughts um, about the project there. Um, there's a there's a section about equity. We'll talk about equity concerns and then uh, a section about energy supply and things, uh, you know, we want to hear from you about where you think Peabody should be getting its energy from in the future to help reduce emissions. Um, but we also want to hear from you about uh, mobility and transportation and uh, buildings and uh, how to make those greener and, and lower emissions. So, um, so we want to cover kind of the full, the full breadth of, of climate action issues in the community uh, tonight. So um, with that, I will... Um, are you guys seeing seeing the 
the slides, that, that first intro slide, great. Okay, thank you, thank you. So uh, with that, we wanna start with a quick icebreaker. Um, if you would, in the chat, could you let us know what your favorite thing about Peabody is? Low electric rates. Low electric rates. Thanks, Ray. Open spaces, says open, Drew, the, the open to space high, planner. Open major highways. Location. Good people who want to see the city continue to move forward. The people. It's history, the right pronunciation. I did, I, Peabody, right? I got it, right? Yeah, yeah. good, yeah. good, good. I was saying recently that we need a, a pronunciation guide for like new staff or interns at MAPC about the idiosyncratic ways to pronounce different uh, different town and city names uh, in, in Massachusetts. Uh, close to Boston, it's diversity. Um, Great. So uh, feel free to keep keep chiming in in the chat. We'd love to hear what you like about your community. Um, so with that, I'm going to just talk about the, the goals for the workshop tonight. I'll run through kind of the agenda for the evening. Um, and then we'll dive into some some sort of context about why we're here and what we're doing. So um, so I think our, our first goal tonight is to introduce you all to the, the Net Zero Roadmap process and, and the project that we are working on with, with the city and with PMLP. Um, we also wanna gather feedback and, and your input um, to inform the, the roadmap and the city's vision for how to address climate change at the local level um, and, and, and really gather input about the sort of strategies and the and the actions that we will include in that roadmap, uh, and then this is this is the first first opportunity, but certainly not the last, to engage in in this process. So we really want to encourage um, you all and also your neighbors and friends and family um, to to engage with us in this process. Um, so with that, I am just going to pause really quickly. I realized that my computer is not plugged in and my battery is running out. So I'm going to turn off my screen real quick and plug in, and I will be right back. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, sorry about that. That should be on my punch list of things to remember to do before starting this new meeting. Um, great, so um, agenda for the evening. We're gonna start with a quick visioning exercise to hear from you about what you want your community to look like in the future after we've um, kind of solved climate change and things are, things are looking up. Um, I'll then give a, a brief presentation about the context for this work and, and why, why we're doing this. Um, we, we're then gonna spend most of our time tonight in breakout groups to hear from you all. I have a team of my colleagues here who I'll introduce in just a second who are gonna facilitate those breakouts. And that's where we'll really kind of dive into the actions uh, that we want to include in PBD's Net Zero Roadmap. Uh, then we'll kind of report out from those discussions and talk about the next steps in the planning process before we wrap up, um, hopefully right at 7.30 to get, get you all out of here on time. So that's our plan for the evening. Um, so I'm joined here tonight by my colleagues, uh, Julie Curdy, who's a clean energy and climate strategy manager and senior planner on the clean energy team at MAPC, um, Janessa Irvin and Francelis Mario Suarez, who are our clean energy and climate fellows, um, and then my colleague, Jesse Way, who's a clean energy specialist. Um, they will all be your facilitators and guides for uh, for those breakout sessions tonight. So thanks thanks to them for joining. 
Um, and just by way of sort of caretaking and ground rule setting, um, would encourage you to share your name and have your camera on if you if you want to, if you're like cooking dinner or eating dinner or otherwise occupied, no pressure to have your video on. Um, but it's always helpful to see see your faces. Um, we're going to ask you to stay muted until the breakout discussions just to avoid background noise. And if you have questions um, or, or comments in the full, full group sessions, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, and for, for the discussions in the breakout groups, just wanted to provide some guidelines for us all to use. Um, use I statements, so speak from your own personal experience, take space and make space. Um, so make sure that everybody has a chance to share their, uh, their thoughts with the group. And if you've um, had a lot to say so far, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to ask you to make space for others to share their, their thoughts as well. Um, use accessible language. Uh, cl climate action and climate discussions can get really wonky really fast. And we love to use jargon and acronyms and all that stuff to the extent possible. Um, let's, let's try to avoid the jargon and the acronyms or at least spell them out when we use them um, just to, to make sure that everybody understands what we're saying. Um, lean into the edges. So there may be like d disagreement or uncomfortable things. That's okay. We want to hear from you, your, your thoughts and opinions. Um, and, and those sort of those edges uh, can, can be helpful. They can be our sort of learning edge. So um, let's, let's try to lean into those when we can. Um, accept and expect lack of closure. Uh, we're not going to solve climate change in 90 minutes tonight, unfortunately. And this is also just the beginning of this process. So, um, so we, we're not going to wrap everything up with a, a tidy bow um, by the end of tonight's workshop. But, um, but I think we'll, we'll learn some and, and uh, get a lot of good ideas out on the table um, through, through our work here tonight. Um, listen for understanding. Um, I like this one. It's you know listen with an with an open mind and and with the intent of understanding what what people are saying um, and active participation. We want to hear from you tonight. We're excited to to hear from from you all your your thoughts and priorities. Um, so please please actively participate. So with that, um, we are going to do our our uh, first kind of interactive activity for the night. So um, imagine that the year is 2050 and the city of Peabody has met its climate goals. You are writing a postcard to your current self in 2021. What does Peabody look like uh, now in 2050? What changes took place to make Peabody a sustainable and climate resilient community? So I'm gonna ask you to think about that. We're gonna give you about five minutes or so to, um, to think and write. And I will uh, shut up and put on some music uh, for thinking and writing too. And um, we have this um, mapc.ma slash postcard. Um, can I ask somebody to drop that link in the chat so folks can just click that and go directly to there. But if you type in, mapc.ma slash peabody dash postcard. It'll also take you to a little form um, that looks like a, a little postcard or a letter and you can enter that there. Okay, so I'm gonna put on some music. Um, stop sharing my screen and get a link for you. And also pause recording so we don't have a awkward gap in our recording. We and PMLP to, um, to develop this roadmap and thank you to everyone who ever just started recording again, thanks. 
So, um, so what do we mean when we say net zero? What are we talking about here? Um, so for us, net zero planning means the, the development of community-wide goals, strategies, and processes to enable a municipality to achieve net zero carbon emissions. And to achieve net zero, that means that a community first reduces greenhouse gas uh, emissions to the greatest extent possible. That's the really, the really important part. And then uh, balances out any remaining emissions uh, through greenhouse gas removal, either carbon offsets or sequestration. Um, and we really want to minimize those at the sort of far, far end of this process by doing as much as we can as fast as possible to, um, to eliminate and, and reduce those greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so that's that's what we're here to kind of to think about and to to talk about is is how Peabody gets gets uh, from from where it is today to that that net zero goal. Um, so um, in in the context of of the sort of statewide picture here in Massachusetts, um, just wanted to to mention that. Um, Massachusetts law requires us to meet net zero emissions statewide by 2050, and also requires a 50% a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And that's um, uh, the, the new climate law, the 2050 roadmap laws, it's often called, just passed earlier this year, established those requirements. Um, Relevant to you all, it also, uh, for the first time, requires municipal light plants to purchase 50% uh, of their power from non-carbon sources by 2030 and to get to net zero emissions to align with the rest of the state by 2050. Um, and some other kind of relevant and exciting pieces of that, it, it uh, helps to establish a new stretch energy code, a bunch of new energy efficiency standards for appliances and, and other things. Um, it clearly defines environmental justice uh, for the first time and, and, and designates environmental justice communities, um, has components about workforce, and there's a lot of other really great, great stuff in, in that law that builds on, on um, lots of progressive climate legislation in Massachusetts that we've had for a while. So, um, and, uh, you all are in good company in uh, making strides to address climate change at the local level. Um, so this is just in the 101 cities and towns in Greater Boston that um, that we at MAPC serve in our region. Um, about a quarter of those are developing or have already have developed climate action plans. A third. Um, have adopted goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions community-wide, and about two-thirds have uh, either volunteer committees or, or staff dedicated to climate sustainability and energy issues. Um, those numbers probably have grown since we um, put this slide together, but a um, lot, of, lot of communities like, like Peabody working on this and thinking about their impact at the local level. Um, also just wanted to mention uh, a resource or, or a suite of resources that MAPC has put together uh, recently that will form the foundation of the Net Zero Roadmap and, and really provide a good starting point, which is the Municipal Net Zero Playbook. And um, that's, that uh, is a sort of a series of uh, resources that we've put together over the last couple of years um, to kind of pull together the, the best practices from municipalities around uh, the greater Boston region, throughout Massachusetts, and, and also throughout the, the US um, around um, energy, energy supply, mobility issues, uh, reducing emissions from buildings. And also there's, there's a whole section on zoning and permitting as kind of uh, primary tools that, that uh, local governments have to address climate change. So um, we we just launched that recently and did a whole webinar on that. Um, you can find that at our website, the, the link on the slide there, and happy to share share that with you after this workshop. Um, but um, 
the yeah so that's that's available and that's i think um, a resource that we'll be using in the development of the net zero playbook um it's just kind of a a preview of some of those chapters and what what the playbook looks like um Great. And so um, Kurt also mentioned that we've been doing a bunch of data collection as part of the beginning of this project. And uh, a lot of the data that we've been collecting so far is um, energy use data to help us determine what the current uh, emissions picture for Peabody is. And so we, we collected data from uh, the year 2017, which is the, the year in which there is the most complete uh, sample of data, particularly around uh, vehicle emissions. Um, so conducted a, a um, greenhouse gas inventory, looking at, at all of the greenhouse gas emissions for 2017 and put together this, this picture of, of where emissions come from in Peabody. So um, we can see that uh, emissions from commercial and industrial buildings and manufacturing industries is, is one of the biggest sources of emissions in PUD. Um, passenger vehicles are tied at uh, about, about a third, and then residential buildings are another major source of emissions for you all. Um, the total amount of, of carbon emissions uh, is uh, about 437,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. Um, and the per capita emissions uh, in, in the sort of preliminary version of this in inventory is about um, 8.2 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per, per person in Peabody, um, which means that you're a little higher than some communities near you, but there are also, there's also more, more industry, more business in Peabody than, than some other places. Um, so um, yeah, so that's kind of the context and I think a helpful um, picture just to think about in terms of thinking about where Peabody um, should, should prioritize its actions in, in the short and medium term and, um, and what your kind of baseline is um, that you will be working from. Um, and then another kind of graph from that inventory, um, this just shows the source of, of where emissions from buildings are coming from, showing that natural gas is um, a major source of emissions um, for heating heating homes and buildings. Um, there's still plenty of fuel oil being burned in Peabody, at least as of 2017, and um, electricity. So that includes uh, natural gas is a lot of how we get uh, our electricity here in New England. That also uh, accounts for about a third of of your emissions from buildings specifically. So uh, that's the inventory. I'll, I'll pause there for questions. If, if folks have any questions at this point, um, we have a little, a little bit of time and, um, and then we can go into breakouts. Yeah, I see uh, Bardwell Salmon with, with their hand up. I'm surprised that you don't include food which with all of its ramifications equate to about a third of the greenhouse gas emissions and certainly should be considered in what we're doing. Uh, cer certainly, certainly the case, Bardwell. And um, the, you know, we can share more information about the methodology and the inventory tool that MAPC uses with um, municipalities. Um, there, uh, yeah, there, there isn't a clear way for us to kind of build that into the picture, but I think your, your point is a good one. Obviously, food emissions are really important, and finding ways to localize food production um, could be a strategy that, that we want to include in your roadmap, so would, would love to hear more from you about that in, in the breakout groups. Check the chat here. Um, Great. Any other questions before we um, move on to hearing from some of you all in your responses to the postcard uh, activity? I think Jerry has his hand up. Yeah, Jerry. Let me show my comment. The first step 
on the path to reduce GHG is to stop the peaker plant. It's only going to add more emissions. I mean, we're going backwards when we say we're going forwards. Please. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Thanks for that comment. And looking forward to hearing more from you in, in the breakout groups. Yeah. Hi, Brooks. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see I didn't see in, in the chart that was included that I think Kurt put together. Where was it in the chart that showed emissions from uh, our peaker plant? Was, was it in there included? Was that considered in the buildings portion? Um, um, I, I was just trying to put it together. I know it kind of breathes by quick, but just curious. Yeah, so that would be, um, so, so the methodology um, that we use, we're sort of accounting for the electricity that's used in like in buildings, not energy production in, um, in Peabody because um, the energy produced at, at say a, a peaker plant or, or a solar farm, that's like that's going onto the grid and it's being used elsewhere. So we're basically using the um, the emissions calculations for for the New England grid or for the power um, that PMLP is purchasing for you all, and then the total amount of electricity consumed by buildings in Peabody um, to to yeah to calculate the the electricity the emissions from electricity used in buildings. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, kind of, sort of. Um, but the emissions coming from the speaker plant, which is used basically part time, uh, is really very little in comparison to the people's homes that they burn fossil fuels throughout the winter in Peabody, if you're including that in the chart. I just didn't see the relevance in, in that, the plant versus the chart. Just the answer to, to Jerry is big concern about the plant. Um, I just think it's probably irrelevant compared to the amount of homes that burn natural gas and oil in Peabody. You know what I'm saying? I think. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. I yeah. I I wouldn't say that it's that it's irrelevant, but I think um, the the way the way that we're accounting for um, for emissions in Peabody, we are not we're not putting the city of Peabody on the hook or the community of Peabody on the hook for all of the power that's generated there because that power is being used elsewhere in throughout New England. Um, but what we what we are using um, in part to create an apples to apples comparison across communities is um, what what is what is used by end end users or customers in in Peabody and um, yeah, and heating, for example, heating fuels, gas uh, burned in homes or oil or, or electricity used for heating is, is a major source of emissions as well. So um, yeah, so I think with that, um, if you have other questions or comments, feel free to drop those in the chat. I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse Way from our team to take us through a summary of the, um, the responses to the postcard activity, and then we will, um, send you all off into breakout groups. Yeah, th thanks, Brooks. And if we go to the next slide, we have a word cloud here that we, we quickly put together based on um, all of the postcards that you submitted, basically the ideas that um, the, the words that are showing up bigger and, and in bold were, were mentioned more often. So it, it kind of gives you a just a quick glimpse of what, what people are thinking about and what they're writing about in those post postcards to the future. So. Some of the things that stick out to me here, our bike is you know, front and center. Um, we also have walk, electric vehicle, green. Peabody is obviously in there. Um, solar, uh, charging, charge and station, which I assume probably relates to electric vehicle charging stations. Um, climate, you also see people is up there. So making sure that people are centered in this um, plant. Uh, energy. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts there, but um, definitely those those were some of the things that that stuck out to me. Um, and then I also just wanted to share a couple of uh, postcard responses. I was kind of uh, looking through them as Brooks was taking you through the greenhouse gas inventory. So there are a couple that I just wanted to share here. So I'm going to to read them out for you. Um, the first one is. 
more trees are planted to shade and reduce pavement and structures from adding to an already warmer temperatures, efforts are made to control and wisely use valuable water resources. This includes finding more innovative ways to address stormwater runoff. A network of bike paths makes it easier and more welcoming to get around the city to other places, reducing the need for more cars on the road. Residents have a clear understanding of how they can reduce their climate footprint. It's not just talked about in planning sessions like these, but rather a common practice that everyone lives out every day. Um, so that was one, I, I, I think it paints a really uh, nice picture of where we can get to if we all kind of work together um, at this. Um, the other one that I'll read off is more green space to help with air quality as well as carbon se sequestering, more walkable and bikeable streets, fewer vehicles, but those that are on the road are electric vehicles. Technology will allow for electric vehicles to be charged during off-peak times and just charged during times when it is needed by the electric grid. Building heating will be accomplished with heat pump technology. Homes will be built more efficiently and self-sustainably. So those were just two that stuck out to me. I, you know, there were a number of uh, really great postcard responses. So uh, definitely gives our team some material to look through as we uh, work to develop this this roadmap. Uh, back to you, Brooks. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. And um, yeah, thank you to all of you for for your great um, thoughts and and visions in those postcards. Um, with that, so we're going to send you out into uh, to breakout rooms now. Um, we're gonna you're gonna have an opportunity to share your thoughts on priorities and strategies and actions that um, PBD should include in its um, in its net zero roadmap. And so we're gonna ask you about overall priorities, about equity uh, questions, and then talk about uh, buildings, mobility, and energy supply. And then if there are other things you wanna talk about too, feel free to go into that. Um, we have about, uh, let's see, it's 6.41 now. So we'll give you about 35 to 40 minutes in those groups, and then we'll pull, um, pull you back into the main room here. Um, share out, ask the facilitators or um, a group member to share out um, what, uh, what you discussed. And then, um, and then we will wrap up for the evening. So with that, I will open the rooms. If you have trouble getting into a room, uh, let me know and I can help uh, nudge you over there, but you should see a pop-up window shortly that um, invites you to join a breakout room. I'm going to stop sharing my screen also. Everybody, folks are going to be filing in from their breakout groups. Hope you all had a good good discussion. I saw some really good, good ideas being generated there. And uh, sorry if you got uh, zip, zapped back into the main uh main room in the middle of a of a thought that you were trying to share um so i think um let's see i think everybody's back now and i might just ask um if any of the facilitators uh want to share some takeaways from their uh breakout discussions before we talk through kind of the the next steps and um and wrap up for the evening. Anybody want to share? Julie, Jesse, Francelis, Janessa? Sure. I'd be happy to share. Um, our group, we were group one, um, and we talked a lot in the buildings and the energy space. So we talked about ideas like using the city's site plan review as an opportunity to encourage buildings to be more energy efficient or to use renewable energy. Um, we also talked about solar ready zoning as another tangible tool. And then we talked a lot about the um, PMLP and some of the opportunities in the future to think about different utility rate structures. If there's more renewable energy online, um, should the utility think about a different business model um, that doesn't necessarily involve energy supply, but the distribution more. Um, and we also talked about time of use rates and some future electricity sources like fusion power. Cool, thank you, Julie. Um, sounds like you covered a, a wide range of topics and some, some great solutions there. Um, anybody else want to share out 
I can go. Yeah, we sim similarly, we also talked a lot about PMLP. I'm talking about energy storage, um, kind of like not relying on older technology, trying to resort more to renewable energy, but making sure that PMLP is going to kind of take the lead um, for renewable energy. Um, we talked a little bit about like how to plan for like resilient challenges that we're having in this town or in the city, um, water challenges, trying to create a more resilient future. Um, I think water challenges is like a big flooding. Flooding is a big thing here. So like they want to talk about how we're going to combat that issue and kind of like what kind of resources can we use for that. Um, but we definitely talked a lot about energy storage again and just trying to find a way to incorporate solar energy with making, while making it equitable for everyone. Great. Thanks, Janessa. Yeah, that, that equity piece is important. I was glad to hear um, all of your groups touching on that. Um, Jesse, did you wanna share a summary of your- Yeah, I, I can jump in. Um, we didn't get to dive deep on any topics, but we did discuss kind of a wide range. Um, so uh, I guess first and foremost, there was a lot of talk about ensuring transparency throughout uh, this process and ensuring that the, the, the public has an adequate voice. So I think that's really important. And then we talked about things like distributed solar, uh, wind generation, electric vehicle charging stations, recycling, composting, and just generally waste reduction. Uh, carbon capture and sequestration came up. Um, so we talked uh, reducing peak energy demand uh, in coordination with the PMLP. So uh, lots of talk uh, in terms of technologies and strategies. Um, for the equity piece, I thought we had a good discussion. Um, someone cited a need to kind of engage with those communities and better understand their needs. Um, also ensuring that uh, low carbon technologies are available to those populations, both financially. So thinking about grants to help fund uh, the transition for, for some of those folks, but also um, ensuring programs are available to those in uh, rental properties as well and apartment buildings, which is not always the case. Um, so yeah, we talked about a few other things, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Great. Thanks, Jesse. Um, Francelis, anything from your group that you want to share? Yeah. So just like Jesse, we talked about a very big range of things. So I think one of the most important things we talked about was about incentivizing folks um, to have energy supply like, in their homes, like retrofits and such and providing, making that more accessible for them, as well as providing more educational materials. That was an important thing, not just for the topic of energy supply, but also for a lot of other range of topics so that in general, we can help everyone be more informed on the different resources that are available. Um, that will help the community become more net zero as well. And we also spoke about network of like bike paths and maybe having a trolley be added to the transportation system so that that is um, accessible for everyone to get into the city or to go around um, Peabody as well as kind of adding folks to maybe having like Peabody have building codes that enable more solar panels mm -hmm. and other technologies to be placed on homes because right now there's like a lot of surface areas that aren't being utilized as much. So those were some of the things that we touched upon as well. Great. Um, great. Well, it sounds like there were some some sort of themes uh, across that. I heard, you know, solar zoning and and uh, sort of supporting things through both um, incentives and, and grants and that kind of thing, but also just um, educating the community and um, kind of facilitating the transition that uh, homes and businesses are are going to be making um, and um, yeah and I think you know another sort of just theme that I heard was the um, the important role of PMLP as your local electric utility in this transition and um, you know I think uh, communities were working with um, a, a number of other, communities served by by municipal light plants right now. And um, I think that can be a real asset for a community to have your own locally owned, uh, locally managed uh, utility, but um, that the sort of small scale of those means that you, you also have some 
uh, some challenges and uh, a smaller pool of funds to draw from. And, um, and so I think that, yeah, that, that can present some challenges, but also can be a real asset in the, in the path uh, towards, towards meeting those net zero goals. So, um, so I'm gonna um, bring my screen back up here. We're just gonna quickly kind of summarize where we go from here in the, in the rest of this process. And then, uh, and then we'll wrap up and get y'all out of here and off to the rest of your evening. So um, give me one second here to pull this up. Um, so um, we, I, I also heard uh, folks talk about, you know, transparency and wanting opportunities to weigh in on this process. Um, I'll say, say again, you know, this is this is really the beginning, and um, things are going to move quickly with with our um, sort of technical assistance to the city through this project. Um, we're trying to have a draft of. The roadmap um, th that we're going to be working on over the course of this this coming winter, and we're going to start that, you know, basically uh, as soon as we wrap up the workshop here. We have a lot of great ideas from from you all, and so we can start getting to work on that roadmap. Um, but I think uh, the other thing that we want to be doing, and that we have um, we have sort of accounted for in the scope of this project, is to to do sort of ongoing engagement with community members. And so that, that might be through a survey or a form uh, that folks can fill out if they couldn't make it to the workshop tonight, or if, if y'all have other ideas that you wanna share with us. Um, we could do kind of focus groups or interviews with community members. There are a bunch of different ways that, that we've kind of approached um, that kind of ongoing engagement uh, sort of in between the kickoff workshop and the workshop uh, that we'll host in the spring to gather more feedback from you all about the draft of that roadmap. Um, and then the, the, the plan is to, to finalize that roadmap um, by um, the spring of this year. So by the um, sort of end of June to have a pretty good uh, roadmap ready for you all uh, and for the city to start working with as um, as kind of the guidance about um, where where to go in the in the short medium term to start making progress towards that net zero goal. So, um, any questions about uh, that process? Um, and uh, yeah, I see Stuart has a question about getting the final roadmap early so we can incorporate new ideas in our ten year uh, master plans. Um, don't, I don't want to rush the, I don't want to rush the process, but, um, I guess I'll look to Kurt if there are ongoing planning processes that we need to make sure that we're sort of plugging into so that we're not missing the boat there. Um, obviously want, um, want this, this roadmap to be, um, very closely connected to any other, um, planning processes that the city is, is undertaking currently. Yes, uh, thank you, Brooke. Uh, we'll get, um, when we get a draft uh, net zero roadmap, we'll get that up on the webpage. We'll let people know. Yep. Uh, we'll give them plenty of opportunity to comment and provide additional input. Like you said before, this is the beginning. Uh, I think we, the grant was approved in February. I think we had our first kickoff meeting in May. So uh, then we spent the summer basically trying to gather data uh, from all different sources regards to uh, electric use and emissions and really putting that all together and trying to get some information. And, and this is, like you said, this is the beginning. This is the first step. We'll get, we're looking to get input from people. Uh, we'll get that uh, a net zero roadmap up on the web page when it's available. And we'll, get, we'll look forward to getting some more comments in. Yeah, that's great. And um, I know that, uh, that I heard from at least one um, member of the Green Peabody group. If there are other um, other community groups that wanna would like to be involved and and weigh in, um, I think we we would love to connect with Green Peabody or other community organizations. And I think particularly um, with that kind of process of getting feedback on the draft roadmap. I think our plan is to do another workshop similar to this, but with kind of the, the details um, fleshed out and ready for you all to review. 
and also, you know, another kind of uh, strategy there that has worked pretty well in other communities is to do a little bit of a roadshow to kind of take that around to different um, city committees or groups of, of stakeholders that might be interested to weigh in. So um, we'll be working with uh, with Kurt and Drew to to figure out you know which which groups those those are and um, who who to talk to there. But would love to hear from you all if you have um, have thoughts about that. So I'll I'll put my email in the chat if you want to reach out with thoughts or questions. Um, and I I imagine that Kurt and Drew uh, Drew's contact info is available on the city website as well. Um, but yeah, it's we'll, wonderful um, to hear all this stuff, but I'm really biting my tongue because uh, you ask for opportunities to weigh in with us. There were a, was a breakout room where the Peaker plant was part of our conversation quite a bit. You didn't say one word about it in your report to the whole group. You don't want to check in about the Peaker. That's the message I got tonight. That it's not even something we can discuss with you as part of this net zero plan. Yeah, Susan, thank you for that. I I don't think that's um, that that is that certainly wasn't our intent. And I think we heard in multiple groups. I was bouncing around between the groups. We heard that it's a really important issue, and I think there there will be opportunities for us to um, you know if. If we hear from folks that that's a really important strategy that PBD should should um, disengage from, from that project, tonight, that's something that we can word. consider including in the roadmap. Um, but uh, but I yeah I, I think we appreciate the the input that we heard from folks on that project project. We you know we heard differing opinions, but we appreciate all of you for showing up uh, to weigh in on the net zero roadmap and. Um, with that, I want to let everybody go on time. Thank you all for your input. We encourage you all to stay, stay engaged throughout this process, and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. Thanks, everybody. Where's your email? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me drop that in. Sorry about that. Um, it's bwinner who, at mapc.org. Who is, who is the person from PMLP? Uh, that's Brian Howcroft is here. Um, he's oh, okay. The, um, and I think his his uh, contact info should be available. And uh, I see Joe Joe Anastasi is as well here. So yeah, yeah would thanks. encourage you all to to be in touch. Okay, um, thank you everyone. Um, we'll we have the recording of this. We'll get the materials up and um, stay tuned for more updates. And and thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for spending your Tuesday night with us. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.